Welcome to chemistry class with an aquatic Christopher GK. Of course, your chemistry teacher. Today we will be looking at a topic very common and uh, common around us. And uh, before we begin that, I want to remind you once again or to encourage you to hit the subscription icon on my YouTube channel as you have seen it on red. Hit the button and also the notification bell beneath the your your the icon of your phone or your laptop now we are going to so that whenever i upload my youtube videos you have notification for that all right before we continue i want to begin by bringing the topic for the day and showing you that what we have today is what a topic is a we have topic as air today. It's a common word to us. We breathe in oxygen and breathe down carbon dioxide. Some persons say we breathe in air, we bring down, bring out carbon dioxide. And air is everywhere, air is around us. So we are want to look at this particular topic, air. What is actually air? It's expected by the end of this particular video, you should be able to know what know the composition of air. You know the composition or name the composition of air. You know that air is not just one thing. Rather, there are things that are composed of air, and that thing you should also be able to also prove that air is a mixture. You show the evidence that air is a mixture, not just a compound. Again, you are able to explain the different flames. We have different flames. It's the air that enables them to that, that enables them to, to burn. But you now know different flames we have. Flames we have, something like hydrogen flame, candle flame, bonzing burner flame, and uh, others. But these are the ones we want to look into. All right, these are the aims and objectives, but we are going to follow them one after the other. And by the end of the video, we must have concluded and learned all of these objectives. All right, let's, let's uh, take them one after the other. What is air? What is air? Air is a mixture of gases in the atmosphere and is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, noble gases, water vapor, and other gaseous impurities. So so-called air around us is made up of several things. It's made up of oxygen, it's made up of hydrogen, it's made up of carbon dioxide, noble gases, water vapors, and others. Other impurities on it, meaning that air is not pure. All right, what are the percentages of those components or constituents of air. Now, percentage composition by volume of the constituents of air are given below. We have the nitrogen as the has highest percentage in air composition. It has 78.1%. We have oxygen as 20.9, or you can call it approximately 21. We have noble gases as 1%. Carbon four, uh, carbon four oxide as 0.3 percent. Then water vapors vary from 0 to 1.2. But these are the composition of air. So whenever you hear about air, know that you are not talking about oxygen. So many persons think that air is oxygen. Of course, sometimes we say that a substance born in air, we use oxygen to represent it because it's actually what so supports such kind of combustion in that substance. So, but air is not just oxygen, it's a mixture of compound. Now, air, as we said, look at the composition by, in terms of pie charts, the, you can see that nitrogen has a high, highest percentage, oxygen is the next one, then after that we now have rare gases, which are gone gases, has to do with rare gases, and that one, we now have uh, other gases, then carbon, four oxide, 
which could be named as carbon dioxide. This is just their representation in pie chart, but this particular chart also table has already explained that. So any one of it you can use to know that air is not just uh, an oxygen, but a composition of several compounds, uh, elements. Okay, um, what evidence show, shows that air is not, is, is a mixture? We have evidences, we have proofs to show that air is a mixture. Number one is that the constituents of air can be separated easily by physical means or physical method. Still know that the compound cannot be separated, cannot be separated by physical means. Rather, air component, constituent of air can be separated by physical method. That is number one proof. Number two is that the composition of air cannot be represented by chemical formula as in the case of other, other compounds or, or in case of a compound. Air, there is no formula for air. That we write maybe in combustion, like in the last video we talked about combustion of uh, carbon, which has to do with uh, carbon plus oxygen. Of course, actually we, what we meant there is that when carbon burns in oxygen, it's oxygen that we actually mean in issue of combustion of uh, maybe hydrocarbon or carbon or as the case any other compound we are talking of or metal or anything so it's the air part of the oxygen that we are talking and that is why we are using oxygen to represent it so it air cannot be represented by a chemical formula as in case of a, a compound that's number two proof number three is that if a if the appropriate proportion of each of the different constituents of air are mixed together under normal conditions the mixture obtained will be the same as ordinary air in every way. So you can't just mix it and it turns to something else. Like when you mix hydrogen and uh, oxygen, if they react, they form something totally different. No, if you bring the component, mix it, air is air in any proportion, whether in volume, higher volume, in whichever, no. Because air, water, requires two hydrogen atoms in order to and one one oxygen but this one in any proportion that you miss it air is air it will be air it can't be something else than that so another proof now is that the constituents of air still retains still retain their individual properties the constituents of air retain their individual properties air oxygen retain its property uh, nitrogen retain its property carbon dioxide rare gases and all of that so that is a wonderful one we need to know about air. All right, that air is what supports flame. That is what supports burning. That is what supports uh, that you are seeing something burning around you is because of air that helps it. It doesn't mean that something will not burn without air. Of course, we have when something burn destructive distillation of some, some things like coal and all other things. But uh, air is helps, helps burning. So let's look at flame that that is being produced in burning. All right, flames, what, are, what, 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 what does it mean? Flames are produced when substance, when substance is born. When substance is born, flame is being produced. We see flame around us in, the, in different form of flame per day. So a flame can be described as a region where gases combine chemically with the production of heat and light. Of course, when you see flame, there is heat, there is light. So, but it's chemical combination. When chemicals mix, when gases are mean mix chemically, it's a chemical reaction. That is the what I'm just trying to say there. So, flames are composed of different zones. A flame may be luminous or non-luminous zone. So it depends on the particular substance that is being born. Uh, the nature of the substance that is being born determines the nature of flame that will be produced. That is one thing we need to know. All right, the type of flames produced depends on the nature of substance that is burning. The luminosity of a flame is caused by an increase in the temperature or pressure of the burning gas and by the presence of solid particles. So that is what I'm just trying to bring here. And uh, it's the nature of the substance that is being born or that is burning 
that determines the flame that it will produce. All right. Let's look at some flames. First one now is hydrogen flame. Hydrogen flame. Hydrogen burns with a very faint non-luminous flame. The structure of hydrogen flame is simple. Why? Because it consists only of two regions and they are on burn gas zone and the zone of complete combustion. In terms of hydrogen flame, it has only one zone, zone of unburned gas region and the zone of complete combustion. That makes it very simple. But something like candle flame has four zones. Candle that you burn at home has four flames. And uh, we are going to look at it. Four zones. And uh, they are one, zone of unburned gas. This zone lies around the wick of the candle around the wick of the candle. That is where the zone of unburnt gas is. Then another one is bright yellow luminous flame. Remember it? Yellow luminous flame zone. The luminosity of this zone is caused by the presence of unburnt carbon particles. At this zone, there is incomplete burning of hydrocarbon due to insufficient supply of air. But remember, it's yellow, bright yellow luminous zone. It's number two zone in candle flame. Number three is non-luminous zone. This zone lies on the outer part of the flame. There is a complete combustion of carbon particles because of plenty supply of air from the atmosphere. So this one is outside the flame. You get this one in the, in the, the region, outside the flame. There is plenty of air, of course, so as a complete combustion of carbon there. Then lastly is blue flame. Blue flame, this zone lies at the base of the flame, which is a region of complete combustion also, where the blue flame is. Now I'm going to show you a picture that depicts these four zones. Look at it, the zone, outside zone of complete combustion, uh, we have the middle zone of partial combustion, which where we have yellow zone. Then the inner zone of unburnt wires vapor, which is black. That is where the three is. Then the other one, which is non-luminous one, is outside this region where we find that one. So these are the regions of candle flame. Okay, we have another one, buzzing burner, uh, uh, buzzing flame. Bunsen flame. Bunsen flame is a type of flame produced when a Bunsen burner is ignited. We found this one in the lab. And uh, a Bunsen burner is built with an air inlet at the base of the burner, burner tube so that a stream of air can be supplied to the flame together with the fuel gas. Of course, we use gas to burn a Bunsen burner. And at the base of it, there is where air is being supplied to the Bunsen burner. When it's being mixed with other air, the gas, it helps it to burn. So this air inlet supply so, uh, supplements the external supply of air and allows a more complete combustion of the fuel. Fuel we mean now is the gas that we, we do put in the, the cylinder. The, that is the fuel we mean there. The air hole can also be adjusted to give a, the flame with the required luminosity. The air inlets at the base of the Bunsen burner at the burner can be adjusted. You can adjust it. There is an opening in the base of the burner where you can adjust it to to allow air more or not to allow it more so that it can mix up with the external air. All right. To produce a luminous bouncing flame, the air hole at the base of the burner, burner tube should be closed. You close it, you tight it, the resulting flame will be high and heavy with a large bright yellow zone within it. 
The flame is not usually very hot, but the position suit on the surface of any object held in it, the way we use it to heat. It supplies, of course, the, the position suit, black uh, stuff or materials on the surface of any material that is in place, is being held on it. So, but to produce a non-luminous flame, a bouncing flame, the air hole should be kept open. The flame is much hotter, cleaner, and much compact than the luminous bouncing flame. Only three zones can be, can be seen in the flame, which are in the bouncing, bouncing flame, we have three zones. In the burner flame, bouncing burner, that of the flame of burner flame, we have three zones. Number one is zone of unburnt gas. This zone is much reduced in size when compared to that of the luminous bouncing flame. That is the zone of unburnt region, I will show you. Then the next one is the zone of luminous, uh, zone of luminous or luminous zone is smaller in size. Then outside, outermost on, on luminous, non-luminous zone, which has increased in size because of, because the flame has a sufficient supply of air. We have three layers, three zones, and bronzing flame. That is what we are just trying to say. Now look at the picture. Here, we have complete combustion. Hottest part of the, the, the flame on burnt gas or air. Look at the three zones. And beneath it, you see something like opening. Air regulator opened. It's been opened there. So in such case, it's been opened. The other one, you can tight it, you can close it. Yellow flame and the blue flame. All right. In the air, in the air hole of the bouncing burner is open. If the air hole of the bouncing burner is open too widely or the fuel supply is slowed down, the rate of combustion may exceed the rate of supply of the fuel mixture, causing the flame to enter the tube to consume any oncoming fuel. The phenomenon is known as striking back. Now, it's expected that the adjustment of the hole to be in commensurate to the, of the gas that will be supplied, the fuel that will be supplied, so that the burning will be okay. All right. It can be corrected by just making air hole smaller to reduce the air supply. That means adjustment of the hole at the base of the burner. However, in order to supply safety measure, the burner should be turned off at once and then the lid with the air open to the suitable extent. That is what we have done so far. And uh, for further discussion and for any other further inquiry, do well to contact me with my line, WhatsApp line or phone line, plus 234-08655-73229, plus 234-8065573229, or send me an email using my email address at crystal116 at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of this particular video. And remember to hit the subscription button, the red button there on your screen now, and also the notification button below your screen. And uh, so that we get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you and be blessed.